If you are a son of a narcissistic mother or suspect that your mother has narcissistic tendencies or strong narcissistic tendencies, uh, you know just how painful uh, that relationship can be. In this video, I'm gonna share with you two of the ways that you've likely been impacted if you're a son of a narcissistic mother. Um, you've been impacted in many, many ways, but in this video, I'm gonna talk about two specific ways that you've likely been impacted by the relationship you've had with your narcissistic mother. And then I'm going to give you a strategy that you can actually use that you can implement starting today that will start to change the relationship with your mother or at least help you to feel that you're happier in spite of the relationship with your narcissistic mother. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So let's uh, get started. just meeting for the first time. My name is Tamara and I'm your courtroom companion. Um, I like to say that I come alongside you and help and support you virtually to help you get through the narcissistic relationships in your life. Or if you've gone through custody or family court, I also come alongside you and help you in that area as well. My passion is helping people go through these areas, narcissism, family court, and custody to help them build their life back better and better um, in spite of all of those circumstances. Um, so I'm passionate about that. That's why I started this channel. So narcissistic mothers have a way of aligning themselves to their sons in a very unhealthy way. They do it with all people in their life, but particularly if they have a son, they align themselves to that son in very unhealthy ways that impact their son for the rest of his life. And as a son, you're probably experiencing a lot of pain because of that relationship. Um, and that spills into other relationships in your life. The first big impact that I want to talk about today is how your narcissistic mother and the relationship you had with her has damaged your self-worth and your self-esteem as a result of that relationship you've probably experienced a lifetime, no matter how old you are, you spent the better part of your adult life um, seeking approval from your mom, which you likely have never received if she's a narcissist. And so you're constantly doing and saying things um, and attending to her needs so that she will give you that approval, but you actually never get it. It's never good enough or it's never enough. And so you likely feel like you're on you're a hamster on a wheel and you just keep going around and around hoping that she'll actually accepting of you and that you will get her approval. Her love of you or love to you was always conditional. It's always going to be conditional. Um, and if you do and say the right things, she'll give you a little attention or she'll provide a lot of attention. She might even do this for a period of time, but before you know it, she pulls that love away again the moment that she realizes that you didn't do or say or provide to her what she thinks you should have. So that love is conditional and that over time will wear over your self-esteem in a way that it becomes ingrained. And so your self-esteem for a lifetime has been impacted by um, this relationship with your mother. And consequently, as a result of that never ending seeking approval from your mom, which is natural as a son, you want your mom to love you and you don't know intellectually in the moment that you're seeking approval. That's not what you tell yourself. But as you go through more and more circumstances with your mom, you might begin to say things she's never happy or she um, is always angry or she's always upset with me. You might tell yourself these things, and but underneath of that is that you're trying to mm -hmm. seek her approval, um, but, but you're never gonna get that. And so you might find yourself in relationships for a lifetime, getting involved with people or partners whether that be an intimate partner, business partner, whatever, but primarily in business, I mean, primarily in your intimate relationships, you might seek partners who are also never happy, who are also never going to uh, be okay with you, or they're, you're seeking their approval. And, be, and you do that because it's familiar um, and you're sort of uh, mirroring the relationship that we, you have with your mom. You're not able to select partners usually that will give back to you in very healthy ways because that's not familiar to you. And so that first big way that she impacts you is in your self-esteem and self-worth. You don't feel worthy 
of having someone to treat you well in relationships. And so you just kind of are in this pattern of, you know, just seeking relationships that are just like the one you have with your mom. You know, I've often heard, you know, you marry your mom. Um, and that's true if you're a son and you have a narcissistic mother, you end up marrying someone that is very similar to her. Um, but it's just a repeated unhealthy pattern that you have in relationships. So that's the first big way that she impacts you. The second big way that I wanted to talk about today that of how your mother impacted you if she's a narcissist is as a son, you were probably never taught how to set healthy boundaries. Um, and that's true of any narcissist. If you've been raised by a narcissistic father, it might be the same thing. But particularly if you're a son of a narcissistic mother, you were taught in either direct ways or indirect ways or both that setting boundaries with your mother was not um, acceptable. Uh, because you were trying to seek her approval, you probably just kind of let go of who you were. You probably let go of things that you wanted and desired in order to please your mom. And so that boundary setting was something that you probably didn't receive. Narcissistic mothers do not promote in their sons the ability to set boundaries. In fact, they do the opposite. If the son tries to assert his independence, for example, and wants to, you know, play baseball, but the mother had, you know, a bad relationship with a baseball player or just doesn't like baseball in general, she might put down baseball to such a degree that the son denies his desire to play baseball and will play the sport that their mother wants them to play or won't play sports at all if that's what will please the mother. A son learns very early on in his relationship with his narcissistic mother that to survive in the home with a narcissistic mom, he must deny who he is. He must silence his authentic self in order to survive. His mom likely also uh, shamed him for things that he desired, wanted, or needed. Let's say that the son is a teenager and wants to hang out with his friends all weekend at a lake um, with the other parents. Well, the narcissistic mother will shame him into having that need in order for her to not be alone that weekend. And so he will, the mother would like talk bad about the parents or talk bad about the friend or even lie about the what the, you know, his friend has said, or will lie about what the parents have done. He will, she will put fear into that son so that that son will ultimately not go away for that weekend and will make that son believe things about his friend or his friend's family in order for him to choose not to go. And if he goes anyway, he will, he will be shamed. He will be, you know, he might even get the silent treatment from his mother when he returns. Um, another example might be that if the son desires to, let's, let's say the mom and the dad are divorced, well, the son of the narcissistic mother might want to go spend some time with the dad that's maybe outside of the custody order, and mom will make him feel horrible for wanting to do that, will shame him into to wanting to do that. So if there are enough instances of these circumstances over the childhood of the son, the son learns to deny his authentic self, which then inherently he's not able to set appropriate boundaries in relationships. And if he can't set them with his mother, he's not likely going to learn how to do it outside of that relationship. He learned how to cater to his mother and deny his own needs. Um, let's say that the son is, you know, older, maybe 30, and the mother wants him to come over and, you know, wash your car or fix a fence or whatever, the son, even though he's tired, even though he's not really feeling up to it, he will deny his own needs in order to please his mother because he knows if he says no to that and just says, let's say he says, I'll, I'll do it this weekend, that's going to anger the mom and he knows it's going to anger the mom. He, by 30 years old, he has learned what it takes to survive in his relationship with his mother. So he's learned to deny his own needs and the ability to set appropriate boundaries in relationships. So what does this mean for you as a son of a narcissistic mother? You will likely pick partners who will also not allow you to set appropriate boundaries in a relationship. And you will spend your time catering to the needs of your partner in spite of yourself. You literally deny yourself in a relationship. And, and you learn that in childhood from being a, being a son of a narcissistic mother. 
And so, you know, sharing those impacts with you, you're probably thinking, okay, so what do I do about it? I've spent, you know, my lifetime, I'm 30 years old. How do I stop this? How do I start to have healthier relationships with my partners and with my mom? Well, first, let me just say that it doesn't happen overnight. What I'm about to su suggest to you and recommend to you is something that will take practice. It'll be like getting on a bike for the first time and falling off, getting on a bike, falling off. You're, it's going to feel awkward. It's going to feel strange. You're not going to do it perfectly the first time, um, but we're going to start slow. And I believe that if you can have small wins in this strategy that I'm about to suggest to you, I believe that will carry over into other areas of your life. So just know it's going to take some time. So I'm about to recommend something I recommend to my male clients. I have a lot of male clients who have narcissistic mothers and they have learned over a lifetime, again, how to deny themselves, how to not set boundaries. They have low self-esteem, low self-worth. They have really bad patterns of getting in relationships with people who treat him in the same way that his mother does. And so when, how I start with my male clients to start to change the dynamic of these relationships is to start to set boundaries with themselves. And we start real small. So one of the things that I suggest to them is to start to set a healthy bedtime for themselves. Because inevitably, it seems like more often than not, my male clients like are lacking sleep and they're lacking the ability to even when they get in the bed, whether it's, you know, in the middle of the night or not, they don't sleep well. And so I help them set boundaries by first setting the bedtime boundary with themselves. And I'm not saying do it hundred percent of the time, but what I suggest to them is to set a healthy bedtime that they themselves know is, an, is a good time for them. So let's say they have to get up at 5 a.m. for work. What does a healthy boundary or a healthy bedtime look like for them? So I let them decide, like, is it eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock? They get to decide that. And then what we do is, okay, so 80% of the time, that's what I recommend, 80% of the time that they set that bedtime, bedtime, they will honor that bedtime. So we always know that life throws us curveballs. You can't do things 100% of the time. So 80% is what we shoot for. So 80% of the time, he sets the bedtime of, say, 10 o'clock, and he honors that bedtime. And he does that for a period of time. And what ends up happening all the time is, let's say he's already you know, uh, not met that bedtime 20% of the week. Inevitably, somebody comes to him and you know, ask something of him. Maybe it's a work project. Maybe it's a, you know, let's go to the bar or, you know, let's, uh, let's go hang out, something like that. And they're in a quandary about what to do, you know, because they have to honor the boundary that they set for themselves. And this is just practice. Now they can go forward and, you know, go do that thing that they've been asked to do. But what they're starting to do is to pause and go, okay, wait a minute. Do I feel like it? Have I already, you know, stayed up late two or three nights this week and I got to honor that bedtime? They, they start to question what it is that they're actually saying yes to. And it's a way of pausing and checking in with themselves. And they might ultimately say, I can't do that. I need to get my rest. Right. And that's not going to happen the first time or maybe even the second time. But over time, they begin to start to check out for themselves, do I want to do this? They haven't been trained. They haven't learned through life to say that it's okay to say no. You know, saying no is the best gift you can give to yourself. It really is because you begin to honor what it is that you want to need. Let's use another example. Let's say that you have a friend who says, hey, buddy, can you come and help me move this Saturday? Well, if you haven't learned to set a boundary, you're probably going to say yes right away. But what I do with my clients is help them get to a point where they question what it is that they are being asked to do. I get them out of autopilot, I guess is another way to say it. I help them get out of autopilot of just saying yes all the time. And that begins by setting boundaries with yourself. And so that's one strategy that I think that you can do to start changing the dynamics of your life. And then you can move on to bigger things where you can set boundaries with work and say, no, I work eight to five. Um, if you need me to work late, 
from time to time, you gotta let me know in advance. I have things I have to do tonight. You know, you can start to say no. Um, and I had a client who has been working for his company for probably over 20 years, and he's always put in this extra time and he never requests to you know, get paid for that time. He always does it because he wants to do a good job. He's again, trying to please. And so we got him to a point of saying to his boss, hey, I need to be compensated for that. If you want me to work this weekend, I need to be compensated for that. And this company said, no, we don't do that. And he said, well, then I can't work overtime. And that was his boundary. And he didn't get there overnight. He got there by doing smaller things for himself, these you know, bedtime. He, you know, I have other clients that started with trying to have better nutrition. I had other clients that started with drinking more water. You know, the setting boundaries with yourself spills over into every other area of your life. And what ends up happening is the over time, this son of a narcissistic mother begins to realize that he deserves better. He, his self-esteem starts to rise. He starts to choose different partners because he feels better about himself. And he's able to eventually, he starts to be able to set boundaries with his mother in spite of her um, reaction or her shaming of him. He doesn't let that bother him as much. And again, not over, not overnight, it happens over time. So that's my strategy that I recommend. If you're a son of a narcissistic mother, you've got to start setting boundaries with yourself. And if it's not a bedtime that you're going to set or drinking more water, what boundary can you set for yourself so that you can then start setting boundaries with others? And if, if this resonates with you, if you're a son of a narcissistic mother, we'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Leave us a comment. Let us know what, what you're doing to get through having a relationship with a narcissistic mother. What have you done that's been successful? We'd love to hear about it. And I do work one-on-one -on -one with my clients um, to help them set better boundaries with their moms. And so if you wanna work one-on-one -on -one with me, you'll see a free discovery call link uh, below that you can uh, work with me and, and we can help you get to that place. I hope you found this helpful. Again, if you'd like to work one-on-one -on -one with me about your very specific situation, I'm happy to do that. Just click that free discovery link below. I also have a membership community um, that I offer exclusive content to my clients um, a part of, as part of that community. And you can click the join button below to learn more about that. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.